All right, what is going on guys? Cam here, I'm back in the office. And today I wanted to talk about Pro Mist filters. So if you're not too familiar with what Pro Mist filters are, uh, Tiffin is pretty well known for their black Pro Mist filter. Um, I know Peter McKinnon released a uh, ND combined with a black Pro Mist filter on it. Um, but essentially what a Pro Mist filter is, is it's a filter that kind of I mean, it's in the name, but it adds a little bit of a mist or a haze to your footage. Um, and it makes your footage look a little less digital, a little less sharp. Um, and it also does this really cool effect when it comes to lights. Uh, it smooths out skin a little bit and it just kind of makes footage look a little more softer, um, a little more like it's been shot on film. And in my opinion, a little more artistic. So, um, I looked into these filters, especially the ones from Tiffin. Tiffin is pretty much the name that's, um, that a lot of people go for. A lot of people know the Tiffin Black Pro Mist filters. And I went online and looked around and they were selling for like over $150. I think right now they go for about 180 to about $200. Um, and for me, you know, I like spending money on things that really make sense. I like spending on my camera bodies. I like spending on like really great lenses, audio, stuff like that. Things like this though, I don't know, for $200, that was kind of hard to justify for me to buy this. So I kept looking and uh, I did a lot of research on, on YouTube and, and seeing you know different people's opinions and whatnot. And I started to come across a lot of videos where people would actually make these filters themselves. You know, there's a couple of techniques that a, a few people used. And um, for me, this sounded like a pretty good option because Quite honestly, like I don't, I don't know if I would have liked this look on my videos, and it would be nice to kind of just try it and and see how it goes. Um, but on top of that, I was really curious with people who have made it themselves and the results they got because a lot of them were saying that the results that they got from the from the ones that they made themselves were pretty much exactly the same as how they would have gotten from a filter, um, like if they were to buy the Black Promise filter from Tiffin. So. Um, what I did is I opted to try a D DIY method um, to make the filter myself and I've actually used it on a couple of weddings and I'm surprised to say that the results have been pretty amazing like I was I was pretty blown away um, at how my footage looked and the fact that it cost me maybe under ten dollars to create it versus the 200 that you would have to pay for um, if you were to get it through Tiffin or whatever um, I was pretty shocked. So the one thing I didn't really notice online as much is a lot of people kind of showed how to do it in a very like surface level way, but there wasn't anything that really went into detail. So I'm hoping this video will kind of, you know, I, I want to go more into the details, how many sprays exactly like how I created the filter, the technique I use, what to do, what not to do to get pretty much the best result you can on the filter. So I guess to start, um, the first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need a uh, clear UV filter. Uh, I recommend getting like the, like the largest size you can and then using step down rings so that you can adapt it to any and all of your lenses, uh, depending on which lenses you wanna use it with. So I used a 77 millimeter filter because that's the biggest lens that I have. Um, and then I use step down rings so I can attach them to all the rest of my, to my lenses. So, um, clear UV filter, you can just get this off Amazon for like under $10. Um, and then step down rings, um, you can also get these on Amazon. If you look on eBay, you could probably get them cheaper there. Um, but that doesn't, those don't cost that much depending on where you get them. And the last thing you're going to need, which I have right here is some hairspray. Um, so to make these filters, a lot of people use... Um, I see a lot of people using hairspray and then there are a lot of people who do use like a black spray paint um, to get the black Pro Mist. Um, and what people say about using, you know, a black Pro Mist versus just like, just having a mist on the filter is that um, with just using mist, it kind of decreases the contrast a bit and doesn't punch the blacks as hard. Whereas if it's a black Pro Mist or if you do use black spray paint, they say it does preserve the blacks a little bit. For me personally, um, I don't mind having the blacks, uh, you know, just lightened up a little bit because I always feel like I can reduce that in post anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna be using the hairspray method. So like I said, I actually have 
the filter here that I created. Um, and I don't know if you guys will be able to notice the difference, but I'm just gonna throw it on the camera here. So this is with the filter on, and this is with the filter off. And you can see it's like super, super subtle, but for example, like the, maybe the light in the background there that where it's kind of, you know, you might see that there's a difference in how much it glows kind of thing. The easiest way to actually see the difference, I'm just gonna screw it right onto the camera here. And the easiest way to actually see the difference here is if you shoot a light like right into your camera. So check this out, this is my cell phone. You probably notice like that little glow that's coming out from like around the light. So if I take the filter off, see how there's a big difference there? So that's kind of just, you know, a subtle way to show you like how this filter kind of affects the lighting and different things um, when it comes to when you're shooting video or even photo, if you were to use it to shoot photo. Now to create the actual filter. So I had a, uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna use like a spare um, ND filter that I had, it came with like a kit with one of the lenses that I brought, bought or whatever off Adorama. They usually give like ND filters. So. Um, I have this uh, ND2 filter that I'm going to be using. Um, again, I recommend just using a clear UV filter unless, I mean, it's entirely up to you, but you know, this way, if you use a clear one, it's not affecting your exposure and stuff like that. So I have a clear filter here and I have the hairspray here. Um, you could, I guess in theory, you could use any kind of hairspray. I haven't tested different ones. I've only really used like a, like a pump spray bottle kind of hairspray. Um, so, I mean, you can use whatever spray you want. I think the most important thing to note though is, is that whatever spray you use, you want to use a spray that creates like the finest mist possible. So the whole idea when you're creating this filter is you want to make sure that there's the smallest dots on the filter as possible and you want them to have even distribution, right? So you don't want bigger um, spots and smaller spots all like randomly on here. You want like an even distribution of the spray on the lens. So the technique that I found works best is you wanna spray the hairspray, um, wait a little like just half a second for like the bigger chunks of spray to fall. And then you wanna pull the filter through sideways through the mist. You don't wanna go straight on, if I can get it in frame here. You don't wanna go straight on like this because you risk like spraying like one too much of the hairspray and then getting like the bigger droplets of hairspray on the lens. So you wanna spray this way and then you wanna move the lens through this way. And I found that about six to seven passes did the trick of creating a one quarter equivalent of a mist pro filter. Um, and the great thing about using the hairspray is that if, if it doesn't turn out how you like it, you can just take it, wash it off and redo it. So you got your hairspray, you got your filter. Um, and before you get started, one thing you do really want to make sure you do is you want to make sure you get some, um, lens cleaner or glass cleaner and make sure you really clean up the, the filter, um, on both sides, because once you have it on there, it's not a good idea to Wipe, wipe where you've done this with microfiber. Um, you don't wanna like smudge any of the hairspray or anything like that. Um, so that's a really important tip. Um, and the other important thing to note is when you spray this and you pull it through, you want to pull it through on the side that's going to be screwing onto the camera. So not the outer side, the inner side. Um, the reason for this, kind of the same thing, is if you get any fingerprints or smudges on the outside, you can clean that right up with uh, with a microfiber um, and it's like less exposed. Whereas like when it's on the inside, it's less exposed when it's screwed on. So the outside it like, you know, you can wipe it down, keep it clean. And the inside, if you have it screwed onto the camera where the spray is, it's less likely to get anything, you know, fingerprints or smudges or anything like that. So um, those are really important to keep in mind. So um, to do this, I'm just gonna show you guys exactly how I created mine. Um, so you wanna, again, hold it right here and maybe spray it at like a 45 degree angle, just like that, and then pull the filter through, right? So two, three, four. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Five, six, 
seven. Okay, so I got a pretty decent uh, amount on here. Um, I think my hairspray is running a little low, so it wasn't spraying out as much, but you kind of want to use your own discretion. Um, this is actually pretty good. It's going to be, I think, a little tricky to see here, but in my opinion, it turned out really well. Um, what you're really looking for is you want things to be like really even and you want small spots, like the smallest possible um, dots all over it. And it's kind of just going to look like literally somebody sprayed it with a mist. Um, once you're done so pretty much once you have this done and you have the amount that you're pretty satisfied with you can like test it on your camera um, shine some light into it see if it gives you the effect you like you don't want it to be too strong in my opinion um, but once you have it done just set it aside let it dry make sure it's like nowhere where dust or anything can fall onto it and then that's pretty much that you can just attach your step up rings and start using it right away so um, yeah, I think what I'll do though, also in this video, is I'll show you guys probably a few clips like right now as to what it looks like. Um, because that's one thing I didn't see online when I made this is like people would do it, but when I actually had it done and I was looking at it, there wasn't a lot of footage showing um, what the actual filter should look like uh, when you're actually looking at it uh, in real life. So um, yeah, I mean, let me know what you guys think if you guys, maybe made a filter like this before. Uh, if you are using the Tiffin filter, what your experiences have been like with that. And um, if you've done both, maybe, you know, what do you guys think? Is there a huge difference when it comes to that um, or not? I don't know. So uh, yeah, I just thought I'd share this with you guys. I've had a great time shooting with this filter on my camera. Uh, it's been giving my footage like a really, really nice, like cinematic filmic look and it's probably going to stay on my camera uh, for the next few weddings at least if not all the rest of them so um hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you guys think leave a comment subscribe and uh, i'll catch you guys on the next one see ya